Activision Blizzard is owed approximately $400 million in franchise. $400 million total! Today we have some insane news about Activision Blizzard and potentially losing, actually definitely losing over $100 million. But real quick before we get into the action, break down everything that's happening. Here's a word from today's sponsor, Gel Blasters. Today's video sponsor is the Gel Blaster Surge, which is freaking sweet. I had to turn off my green screen because obviously it's green. Guys, this thing is freaking sweet. And let me tell you, if I ever saw the silly squad pulling up, Billy Roddy's gonna get drilled by a couple of these bad boys. It is so much fun to use. Let me show you this clip of me and my friends using it last weekend. Oh, I'm not gonna shoot! <laughs> This thing has two blast modes, a semi-auto mode and a full auto mode. Whenever me and my friends are playing though and I'm shooting at the boys, it's gonna be in full auto. I'm not gonna pretend it's definitely gonna be in full auto, guys. This thing is freaking sweet. It's, you, you can't ask for anything better. I actually had a ton of fun with it. My friends had a ton of fun with it too. So make sure you guys use code SAMITO10 to check this thing out. Everything you need is gonna be down in the description. I've had a ton of fun with it and I know you all will too. So thank you all so much. Big shout out to Gel Blast for sponsoring the video. Let's get right into the action. Today, we have some major developments in the Overwatch League, guys, as well as the Call of Duty League, which I'm going to get to in a little bit. And it all started from an announcement from Adam, who is with Overactive GG, Toronto Defiant, and the Toronto Ultra. Basically, Overactive owns both of those games of the pow proud parent, in their words, of the Toronto Defiant and the Toronto Ultra. Um, proud to announce an agreement between Overactive GG, Toronto Defiant, and the Overwatch League. Excited to see what the future holds as we work together to strengthen our game. And let's read a little bit about this, right? So, Overactive Media, or Overactive the Company, a global sports and media entertainment company for today's generation of fans, has reached an agreement with the Overwatch League. Key highlights of that agreement include the signing of a sponsorship deal between the Toronto Defiant and the Overwatch League, and the elimination of outstanding entry fees the complete elimination of what was owed to Activision Blizzard. The agreement also provides for the parties to further to explore further changes to the Overwatch League and business plan moving forward. Quote, our collaboration with the Overwatch League demonstrates commitment to a league that offers the best experience for fans, teams, and players, says Adam, co-founder and interim CEO of Overactive Media. We believe this development indicates promising projects for Overwatch and esports. The value of this agreement, which includes early payment of the league's revenue share, the sponsorship agreement, and elimination of entry fees, is valued at 10.8 million Canadian dollars, which is about 8 million US dollars, meaning that like the company of Activision Blizzard, this is just them acknowledging 100% and striking deals to try to save the Overwatch League, right? We we all have known and heard that things were going downhill for a long time. Um, th there's definitely some profit and things to be made there, but also at the same time, clearly it wasn't working out. So this is a huge deal, and this sets a massive, massive precedent. Let's let's read what people are saying. So Jacob Wolf comes out and says, "Whoa, Overwatch League is waiving the remaining eight million dollars owed by the Defiant, presumably." all other franchises too in franchise fees that means that each franchise played roughly 12 million for the overwatch league stock instead of 20 million they originally owed to recap the season one inaugural teams agreed to pay 20 million dollars to the overwatch league over a multi-year period season two expansion teams were 30 plus million dollars those fees were paused during the 2020 pandemic and then flattened to be equal a few months ago a majority of the overwatch league teams led in part by the toronto defiance ownership overactive hired a British law firm to collectively negotiate against the league for relief. This was the lawsuit, right? So if you guys remember when I talked about uh, a couple months ago how there were Overwatch League organizations suing Activision Blizzard because they obviously for the model of the Overwatch League, it wasn't doing what was promised, right? Uh, there was a ton of hiccups along the way. One of them obviously probably being Overwatch 2 and the, the complete halt of content for the game that really took it out the overwatch league was probably the biggest loser in that sense because there wasn't any interest in people playing the game so why would they watch the esport right not to mention the way the game was designed over the years definitely went against the competitive integrity of the game and if your game's not meant to be competitive and you had people pay you know 20 plus million dollars to get involved in the league then it's probably gonna be a bit of a struggle right but this is such a massive massive deal and i expect you're gonna continue to see more organizations in the overwatch league that are both partnered with the call of duty league teams or even the overwatch league teams on their own get these fees waived and this is kind of this is Blizzard waving the white flag, in my opinion, and I do think this is the right decision, right? You can't just let these orgs completely implode 
And now they're saving eight million extra dollars that either they either save that money or maybe they can invest it into players or more content signing rosters. But this is a huge freaking deal, guys. If you're if you're Activision Blizzard, I mean, you just basically acknowledged the failures of the Overwatch League for just one team. If one team saving eight million dollars, and I believe Toronto was an expansion team. Yes, they were. Toronto was an expansion team, which means they were probably they, they were probably one of the teams that had to pay thirty million dollars total. Though I'm not sure which where they fall in line. But you know, if you're taking about eight million dollars U.S from each team and just saying, we're not going to get this money. This ballpark, you know, it's going to be over $100 million that Activision Blizzard is not going to be receiving to kind of save an, the Overwatch League and change the business model to something that actually will, uh, you know, I still got absolutely robbed. At least the robber gave back some of the money. That's that's funny. Ladies. That's funny. Um, but no, this is a big deal, guys. This this means that Activision Blizzard is acknowledging the fault of their business model and, and a lot of the mistakes, and it's going to be over one hundred million dollars, like potentially. Depend. I, I assume that more orgs. I mean, listen, if you're an Overwatch League owner, you're going to see all this stuff happening, right? And you're going to say, "Well, I want my money back too." So I would expect every single investor to try to kind of be chasing this stuff down um and 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 changing things up so yeah we'll see o over activision blizzard is owed approximately 400 million dollars in franchise 400 million total oh my goodness activision blizzard is still owed between 390 and 420 million dollars in franchise payments for the teams participating in the overwatch and call of duty league after it deferred payments for two years as covid 19 relief League sources told Jacob Wolf. The 20 franchises in the Overwatch League owe the publisher roughly 6 to 7.5 million dollars each for a total of 120 to 150 million. Here are the numbers we want, according to sources. As we said, this is over 100 million dollars plus that Blizzard's not going to get, right? In the Call of Duty League, teams owe an average of 22.5 million each, sources said. I I've heard CDL's doing a bit better, but we're going to talk about some big CDL news at the end of this video. In the Call of Duty League, teams owe an average of $22.5 million each. After making just the initial payments for the league at about $2.5 million, prior to the COVID outbreak in 2020, payment terms for Call of Duty varied, but with the franchise price starting at $25 million as reported by ESPN. Annual payments for both leagues were deferred in fall of 2020 when Activision Blizzard pushed them to the fall of 2022 as a part of its COVID relief measures for teams, according to the Washington Post and confirmed by Jacob Wolf. There's an ongoing discussion now to potentially put those payments off longer to early 2024. Um, Activision Blizzard declined to comment on Friday. Du during the pandemic, Overwatch League reduced the, et the debt owed by its teams, leveling out the franchise pricing for both the 12 inaugural teams who bought in in 2017 and the eight expansion teams who joined in 2018. The new total franchise price for the Overwatch League was roughly $16 million, with teams having already paid between $7.5 to $10 million each. That means Activision Blizzard received close to $200 million in Overwatch League payments over the last five years. And in 2017, the Overwatch League changed its original 12 franchise to $20 million each, becoming the most expensive esports league at the time. In 2018, the league sold eight expansion spots ranging from $27 million to $35 million, right? And now all of that money is going to go back or just not be owed, right? So this is a massive massive i mean and if we do the math here probably this is about a 200 million dollar hit to these franchises and how these things were designed and you know that it just kind of is what it is i mean you could i don't think it's how the leagues were run in particular i think it was more so one how the titles were run and two you know i don't know if youtube gaming even if those big contracts were paid out which is how they're probably making a ton of money off this I don't know if YouTube gaming is the place for just exclusive esports. I, I, I think YouTube, as a YouTube streamer, you know, it, it, it's not designed for esports. It's not as good as Twitch. And I'd be multi-streaming all these platforms if I could. But we have another announcement today. And I have a feeling the Overwatch League is going to be soon to follow. According to Dextero, today, the Call of Duty League is signing a new YouTube exclusivity deal for the 2023 2024 Call of Duty League season, sources have told Dextero. The Call of Duty League will broadcast exclusively on YouTube for two years. And I think this is kind of what happens when you franchise a league and it's all about selling out. Oh, not selling out. Like, you have to ring the register for a business, right? I'm not trying to point the finger at the people who are running these leagues saying, 
you know, you guys sold out. Like, they kind of have to do that because of the situation the executives at Activision Blizzard put them in all those years ago. Where nowadays, I think the best thing for your esport is to be multi-streaming it to as many platforms as possible. And I think Flats talked about that and he was right. But these are massive revolutionary developments changing the scope of what Activision Blizzard is doing. But they just realistically took a 200 million plus dollar hit potentially. And my guess is these contracts are helped to help make up that money and revenue. But, you know, it, it, I don't think it's the, the, the issue of the people running these games. I think this is, again, it, it's, it's a crazy thing. So I, I think that that's, I, I will say, I think Blizzard waiving these fees is good for the scene. Let me make that completely clear. Clearly, it wasn't working and clearly something needed to be changed. And keeping these orgs invested in the business is definitely a good thing for the grand picture of things. And they're also going to be looking to restructure how all of this stuff works. So I think that overall is good. I think YouTube exclusivity is bad for esports. I, I, again, if you're looking at how many people actually view your game, it's definitely not good, right? But also, you know, it, it, it's good for making money to keep the business alive. But it's bad for the viewer because I think that and, and the overall scope of the product because you're limiting its reach in that regard. Um, especially in gaming when that model's changed. So yeah, what do you guys think? This is big, big freaking news, dude. This is big freaking news. So let me know what you guys think down in the comments. Those are my thoughts. I think it's good that they're waiving the fees. I'm glad they're acknowledging the shortcomings of the league and actually doing what they can to keep these orgs involved. And maybe now players will be able to get paid more because the orgs will be willing to invest and you don't have the LA Valiant playing out of a hotel room or something, wherever, wherever they're playing, right? You know, these, these orgs just can't afford to put money into the product based on the way it was taken. So yeah, we'll see guys. Crazy news. That is a big deal. Thank you for watching. That's, you know, today's reaction video. And if you guys have anything that you want me to react to down the line, uh, put it down in the comments or send it to me on Discord or tweet me. So yeah, thanks for watching. Big news. See y'all later. Peace out.